Okay, we're back at EMC World, wrapping up day two. It's all quiet now, because it's the, the end of the day. Crowd's moving out. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. I'm joined with my co-host, Dave Vellante. Uh, Dave, we have a special guest inside theCUBE. Henrik Wagner is here. Henrik is very much involved in the SAP relationship. He's with EMC. Henrik, welcome back to theCUBE. It's always great to see you, my Thank friend. Thank you very much for having me. Really great a pleasure. to see you again. Yeah. Thanks so for I was at, John, I was at uh, EMC's EBC, the, the the place where they bring in customers and brief them, Executive Briefing Center, <laughs> two weeks ago. Stu and I went down, and Henrik, EMC had, you guys had this uh, SAP week, yep. which was uh, one of several that yep. you've been having, but this was a big one. There were well over 200 customers there. We interviewed a bunch of them. We had EMC IT folks on. We yep. were talking about Project Propel. We had some other folks from SAP and EMC on. Talk about that event. I mean, that's pretty amazing. You get sure. what, 250 customers to come yep. to your EBC all at once. Yep. Usually yeah. it's a you know, onesie twosie type of thing. Yeah, no, it's an interesting uh, uh, learning experience in what we've uh, done with SAP Week concept. A couple of quick things first. What we've learned is over the last couple of years is that uh, our SAP customers, specifically the SAP customers, are there and they want to learn from each other, right? They want to collaborate and learn from each other. The other thing we learn in the SAP ecosystem is it's a tremendously collaborative environment. People are leveraging social media, they're talking together, whether it's ASUG or the SAP mentors, Twitter and so forth. Yeah. So we've always done this SAP week events, but it's been very, over the last couple of years, it was very much uh, technology presentations, whiteboard to the customer, you know, about products and solutions. Talking to them. Yeah, talking to them, right? So the last two, three years, uh, we tr look for innovative ways to better communicate and work with our customers. And what we realize is, is getting in a lot of SAP customers in the room together, and rather than us presenting to them, is having them present to each other create kind of a user group environment where they're talking to each other, customers presenting to other customers. We have um, um, you know, uh, EMC Project Propel over there speaking. And then also we incorporate things like joint dinners where everybody's coming and we specifically put clients together that have things in common. Maybe they're going through an x86 replatforming project. Maybe they're deploying SAP, uh, HANA, on BW and so forth. So the whole concept is uh, getting customers connected and collaborating together so they can learn from each other versus just hearing about our products and solutions. And Rick, talk about the SAP transformation. We've been there four years uh, with theCUBE. This will be our fourth. Next week is SAP Sapphire. We'll be there for our fourth season, our fourth, fourth year, as well as EMC World. Interesting transition. EMC is really transforming almost in parallel as fast as SAP. Yep. I mean, SAP, both, you guys have huge install based businesses. Yep. So, talk about what your, what your view is there. Yeah, it's been really interesting over the last couple of years. I think there's some compelling events that have come together, and we divide our SAP business up in the private cloud or the cloud business, and then also the big data and the HANA space. In the private cloud piece, there's some interesting things that's happened around the adoption around VMware and, and cloud and virtual cloud architectures for SAP. And I think over the last two years, we're winning a lot of customers that are now deploying private cloud solutions, whether it's on-premise in their data center or off-premise uh, with their external vir uh, or virtual private cloud with our service providers. But a couple years ago, that used to be anomaly. The people, there were some early adopters. Today, we're winning extremely large customers that are going down this path. It's not if they should go down that path anymore. It's how do I go down that path and how quickly can I go down there? For example, we just had a, a $100 billion retailer that most people in the world are customers of just uh, purchased VBlock for SAP and they're now going to go deploy and go live here in August on a massive system, 100% virtual on, uh, on VBlock on the private cloud. So that alignment has come really well for us around standardizing for x86. Um, driving VMware and virtualization around SAP, and then also driving automation. So things like uh, SAP LVM, Cisco Title, you know, this week we heard about Viper and you know, the underlying framework for software defined data centers, driving that automation for SAP customers. So that, that's been a very interesting, and now we feel like we've come to this uh, 
um, you know, the, the tipping point, and I uh, actually wrote a blog post about it where I said, you know, this year it's, you better deploy uh, private cloud for SAP, otherwise you're going to be falling behind other customers. Cloud is the future. Uh, any other quick uh, sound bites you want to share with the folks around just what you're seeing in the marketplace from social media to you know, the changes in the business landscape? You know, uh, very interesting. Uh, we, we've connected with a lot of customers and ecosystems and partners around social media. I think our executives, uh, 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 Jeremy Burton, and, uh, was talking about it yesterday around aligning with our strategy and our customer strategy, but then aligning with the ecosystem. And one of the outlets we've been able to see to do that is doing that through user groups, through social media, through Twitter, communicating because the ecosystem around SAP is communicating that way. I'll give you one example, which is kind of an interesting new way of, of getting data or information out to our clients. Uh, at actually the um, SAP Week event, uh, we had the EMC Project Propel folks there. Mike Harding is one of the head architects. Um, we convinced him one of the evenings to start his own Twitter account, which he started tweeting about Propel, but the next night, we came up with the idea of starting a Twitter account that's called Put It On HANA. So Twitter, tw uh, Twitter handle name is Put It On HANA. And what Mike Harding is doing, he's documenting on Put It On HANA, everything that EMC IT is doing around HANA. So when they're about to go deploy or upgrade or deploy a patch, or uh, you know, what's his next strategy of deploying BW for HANA, he's putting the journey real time on Twitter. Right? And I, I just think it's just an amazing new way of communicating and getting information out to your clients. I think we have an opportunity to do even more things of that nature to connect even closer with our customers and, and be more, drive more value in the ecosystem. What's driving SAP's business in your opinion? I mean, the company's obviously doing very well. It's, you know, market cap is, is rising. It's making, a, it's making my prediction wrong that EMC and VMware would be the next $100 billion market cap company. I made that back in 2010, but SAP's going to beat you there. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, what's driving their business? You know, uh, I think uh, Steve Lucas said it really well in one of his uh, keynote presentations a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they want their customers, they want to innovate and for their customers, and they want the customers to innovate so they can move faster. One of the examples that a lot of SAP executives bring up is, you know, why does it take 35 clicks to order a laptop for the company you work, but when I order a pizza, it's one click on my, uh, my Apple device or my, my iPhone. So I think they want to they innovate for their, for their customer, they want their customers to innovate so they can move faster to gain a business advantage and, and competitive advantage. But they also realize, I think, one of the only ways you're going to be able to do that is if you reduce the run rate of your existing infrastructure for SAP, right? Reduce the TCO of, of, of that infrastructure. And that's where I think we come in very well with our private cloud strategy and leveraging EMC virtual infrastructure, VMware, driving down that cost and then helping those customers drive agility and drive uh, innovation for those clients, right? Yeah, what, what are your thoughts on just the industry in general? I mean, you got the big players that are just really solid, right? They got momentum, they got uh, giant balance sheets, they're using them. You know, even if, the, even, if, even if they're not growing a lot, their profits are growing, yeah. and they just, they continue to, you know, even, this, the, even the biggest ones, truck along, um, and you got startups, they innovate, and then they get sucked in. Yep. You know, is that sort of where we're at now? I mean, this is where we're at in the business. Is that, is that it? Is that what we're going to see sort of indefinitely in your opinion, or? Well, I think it's interesting how EMC's been able to position themselves <coughs> and continue to drive, out drive R&D and acquisitions than our competitors compared to our, the size of our company, right? Mm. So most executives have talked about that, the amount of money we spend on R&D and acquisition, is, it looks like we continuously stay ahead of that innovation curve, <laughs> being the size of the company we have. And, and uh, to me, that's just, it's so inspirational to be part of a company that are able to do that and continues to drive innovation. Doing things like the Pivotal Initiative, doing things like uh, you know the joint partnership with VCE for, uh, and so forth. How were you able to do that? I mean, you just go back to the heritage because, because, you know, let's face it, your customers are heads down customers. Most of them are just you know trying to solve storage problems. Yet EMC is able to, you know, break out the 
the glass of the, the, the goggles and see you know, distances. I think How is that? a combination of forces of CIOs not getting the budgets they need from the CFO the next year. They're being forced to come up with opportunities to mm. reduce run rate from 10 to 15%. And then at the same time, they're looking, and the CIOs and IT organizations are looking for ways to bring more value and be more relevant to the boardroom. And the way they can do that is making IT into competitive advantage. And that's obviously where HANA comes in. The customers that really get HANA, they're the ones that put their data people, their business people, their IT people in one room, right? And they come up with an, an, an analytics use case or a business case and a use case, leverage HANA that directly impacts the way they do business, right? On gaining customers or retaining customers or creating new revenue streams for them. So I think there's a combination of pull and push that we're seeing, and EMC's fortunate to be very well positioned in that space. Henrik Wagner, thanks for coming on theCUBE, your friend. We wanted to get you in because we had a great conversation last night. Obviously, we'll see you next week at SAP Sapphire again. Um, but again, thanks for sharing that perspective. Love talking social media with you last night. Uh, I know you got a great vision. You're on, you understand what we do. We love, love chatting with you. And again, EMC's been a great success partner with SAP, thanks to you guys. So, okay, we'll be right back with our day two wrap up. Dave and I will wrap up day two after this short break, so stay with us. If you're still watching, hang on for one more segment. <laughs>